Hello everyone. Imagine this. This is the first day of October 2025 and you log into your Azure portal expecting everything to be running normally. But instead, you discover that the critical workloads are down. The VPN tunnels or the express route circuits that connect your data center to Azure have stopped working. Newly created virtual machines cannot connect to the internet at all. Legacy applications that have been running for years suddenly have started throwing errors and their connections are getting rejected. Some virtual machines refuse to start because the disk they rely on are no longer supported. And the applications that sit behind the load balancers are unreachable now. Sounds unreal, right? But these are the consequences of the Azure retirements that will take effect this year. So Microsoft has set the deadlines and after that the changes will be enforced with no extensions or exceptions. In this video, I'll take you through the five important retirements, explain their impact and outline what you should do to stay prepared. On your screen, you can see the other retirements as well. You can pause the video or check the description of this video. So the first retirement is basic public IP address, which will be retired on 30th September of this year. This change is extremely important because many organizations still use the basic public IP addresses in the VPN gateways or the express route gateways. So once these IP addresses are retired, the services that rely on them will stop working. That means the secure communication path between the on-prem environment and the Azure will be lost. And to prepare for this, you must migrate every basic public IP address to the standard public IP address. And if you fail to migrate before the deadline, your connectivity to the Azure will be cut off. However, this change is very disruptive change. That means when you upgrade or migrate the express route gateways, there will be downtime required, which means the connectivity between the Azure and the on-prem will be impacted during the upgrade also. So if you haven't planned yet, you should start immediately so that you can get the proper planned downtime for the application, which will be impacted. Now the second change is the retirement of the default outbound internet access for the virtual machines. So right now, when you create a virtual machine without configuring the outbound access, Azure automatically gives the default path to the internet. That means it is easy for the servers to download updates, call APIs, connect to the external services. But from 30th September, this behavior will stop. Any new virtual machine created after that date will not have the default outbound internet access. If you need outbound connectivity, specifically internet connectivity, you must configure it explicitly. You can do it using the firewall, NAT gateway, setting up the outbound rules for the standard load balancer or assigning a public IP directly to your virtual machine, which is not recommended though. And one important thing to understand is that the existing virtual machines which are created before this deadline will not be impacted by this change. They will continue to work as they do today. But every VM deployed after 30th September will come up with no internet access until you configure it. Now you need to take a control of the outbound connectivity and you have to plan it properly. The third retirement involves the security protocol TLS 1.0 and TLS 1.1 as they will be blocked across Azure from 31st August, which is end of this month. Only TLS 1.2 and higher will be supported. The impact here is very, very significant. Any legacy applications or the old SDKs, which are outdated or any outdated client that uses TLS 1.0 or 1.1 will fail to connect to the Azure services. And this includes the Azure storage account, SQL database, application gateway, and many other services. For example, if your business application is still connecting to the SQL database using 1.0, that connection will fail. And there is no workaround or grace period. The only solution is to upgrade and review your application. Update all SDKs on the frameworks and test your environment to make sure everything supports TLS 1.2 or higher. So if you don't prepare now, your application will break as soon as the protocols are blocked. Now moving on to the fourth one, the fourth retirement is the Azure unmanaged disk. So in the early days of Azure, unmanaged disk was the standard. The customer used to create the storage account, store their VM disk there as the VHD files. 
this had a lot of complexity and required manual management of performance and capacity. And that is the reason Microsoft moved to the Azure Managed Disk. So on 30th September of this year, 2025, unmanaged disk will be retired completely. Any VM still using an unmanaged disk will not boot. That means the workload depending on those machines will stop working immediately. And the solution is to migrate all the unmanaged disk to the managed disk. And of course, the managed disk are more reliable, easier to manage, come up with important features like snapshots, backups, integration, scaling, encryption, everything. So if you still have the virtual machines with unmanaged disk running in your environment, it's good to scan your environment now. Because after the retirement, those virtual machines will simply fail to start. And the last, which is the fifth retirement, is the Azure Basic Load Balancer. So the Basic Load Balancer were widely used because they were easy to deploy and less expensive than the standard load balancer because they were free. The only cost was for the data transfer. And I have seen a lot of customers still use the basic load balancer and many production applications are running behind them today. But once they are retired, basic load balancer will no longer forward the traffic application depending on them will become offline immediately. And the replacement for the basic load balancer is the standard load balancer, which provides more features as availability zone update, health probes, better monitoring. But if your application are still running on the basic load balancer, you must migrate them uh, to avoid any outage. However, one important thing to note is that the basic load balancer provide default outbound access to the internet. So that means if your virtual machine with a private IP is behind a basic load balancer, then it can connect to internet directly. But as soon as you change from basic to the standard load balancer, the internet connectivity by default goes away. You need to explicitly define it either through the public IP or the firewall or the net gateway. But by default connectivity to the internet will stop. So you need to act now before you have a production outage. Now to summarize this video, end of 2025 is bringing five major Azure retirements, though there are a lot more, but these are the important ones. Basic SKU public IP address are being retired and the services using them must migrate to the standard. Default outbound access is being removed for the new virtual machine, which means you need to configure the outbound access explicitly. TLS 1.1 and 1.0 are being blocked. So only TLS 1.2 and the higher will work. Unmanaged disk will be retired and the VMs using them will not boot. And finally, the basic load balancer is getting retired too. So you have to move to the standard load balancer. So these retirements are not optional. These are mandatory changes with the fixed deadlines. So if you don't act now, you will face outages, broken application, failed workloads. The good news is that you still have time. However, the clock is ticking. Now is the time to audit your environment, scan your environment, plan the migration, test your workload get all the planned outages which are required from the application team and then work on the changes. So in short, these retirements are coming whether you are ready or not. The only question is, will you be prepared when the October arrives? So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.